for the finance meeting signed with the budget meeting, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, we'll get right into it. We can, before we do public comment, we'll add to do a review of the current budgets. And so if you have any questions, that may get them out of the way. So we'll have either Don, you want to do the, and we'll review of uh, where you are this year and where you are. Where you might be Karen. Karen. Yeah. Well, where, Karen. where you got to yeah, last year, where you had a Karen. 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 Good evening. My name is Dawn Norton, and I am the business manager for Ridgefield Public Schools. Ridgefield Public Schools budget is basically an expenditure budget that covers approximately 474 FTEs and educates approximately 4,610 students. Our current budget is slightly more than $98 million. As of the end of the first quarter, we have obligated or expended approximately $85.5 million, $85 million of our $98 million budget, which is approximately 87%. 80% of our budget is salaries and benefits. Certified and non-certified salaries makes up about 60% of our budget and 20% is employee benefits. We have locked in our electricity and oil from June 2020 with slight, rates slightly lower than what we had anticipated during the budget process. Considering all known factors, we are projecting that we will finish this budget year with no over expenditures. A few items that could affect our budget in a positive nature, outplacement of students returning to Richfield, few short-term, long-term disability claims and workers' compensation claims, positive medical experience, unpaid leaves of absence. A few items which could affect our budget in a negative manner, increased number of settlements or outplacements and their associated expenses, unforeseen plant expenses such as boilers or pumps, substitute expenses, higher than anticipated legal expenses, higher than anticipated claims expenses, or colder than usual months resulting in higher fuel and electrical expenses. Um, any questions? Probably a couple of quick ones. Um, we just got the enrollment report, but the enrollment is actually pretty close to where it was expected to be. Mm -hmm. So you haven't had to break any. You haven't had to break any classrooms this year, like we did last. So we saw that budget piece is closer. Um, um, I know you. I guess you don't submit special ed. The ECR special ed request to the state until December, but do you have an idea where that might be? Is it, is it we do We're hard? working on those numbers oh. now to do our first submission of it. Mm -hmm. We do have the million four that we need to um, make up within our budget. Yes, yeah. I mean, I know you got a million five last year. I was trying yes, to figure correct. I mean, we'll, we'll ask you next month. I was trying to figure out whether your ask is going to be similar to or higher than or. Right. And we're still not sure what our ceiling is or what the rates are that the state's going to be. Be yeah. looking at what our calculation will be. Do you, do you have a? Did you do a percentage of what you asked? Did you calculate a percentage of what you got last year as a percentage of what you asked? I did not. No. Okay. I can ask you to do that sometime. All right, before budget meeting. Sure. Okay. Anything, anything else for? Okay. So you don't see big clouds on this year's big clouds, big difficulties on the horizon in terms of meeting this year. But I'm sorry, I can't you don't see any big issues in terms of being able to meet this year's budget, other than the ones you've mentioned. No, other than the ones that I've mentioned, no. The um, um, uh, filling of the superintendent spot and then with the anticipated retirement of the high school principal, is that going to re how is that going to be reflect in the budget as far as um, maybe some savings or or not? Well, I uh, I would have to defer to Margaret on the superintendents, but I, we have budgeted for the superintendent salary in the upcoming budget, same as we had budgeted this year for the superintendent's salary, um, which should be within our budget. 
Um, the, as for the high school principal, I would think that we would have an educated principal or an experienced principal that would be similar to the one that we currently have. So I would expect it to be pretty much equal to the budget that we have. So there's not going to be an overlap or there's not going to be a gap or you don't have, there's, it's just going to be a continuum process of someone's going to retire and you're going to hire someone right away. That's the, that's the. Yeah, at this point we don't know. Oh, but that's the anticipation. That is, that's what you're planning? Is a, to a gap or an overlap? Or, or is it, no, 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 no gap, no, yeah, yes. Um, at, at this point, yeah, we, all I can say is it probably will be just a continuation. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, Kevin, you want to go kind of over sure. fiscal 19 and the fiscal 20 budget for the town? Yep, so fiscal 19 was a very good year. Um, we were favorable by 1.9 million on revenues which was driven by the tax sale, 1.4 million, and um, uh, we're also uh, favorable on interest income and intergovernmental because of you know, conservative budgeting. So 1.9 million favorable on revenues, we're 800,000 favorable on expenses due to health insurance, other insurances, uh, highway was around 200,000, and golf and parks and rec were 200,000 uh, favorable as well. Um, so the two of those combined, 1.7 on the revenue side, um, well, I should mention one thing on the revenue side. We did have some shortfalls and some weakness in conveyance and, and golf, mostly season. That's one of the reasons why golf was able to return money on the expense side. Um, anyway, so 1.9 favorable on revenue, 800,000 favorable on expenses. So that's 2.7 favorable, which means we didn't have to use 1.6 million of our fund balance, the designated use of fund balance. And that still leaves 1.1 million that goes back into undesignated fund balance. So, really, fiscal 19, you know, doesn't get too much better than that as far as uh, results. Again, driven by the tax sale, which is a one, not a one-time thing, but it's not every year. Um, so, if we look at 19, that puts our fund balance somewhere around 10 percent. Um, our undesignated fund balance to expenses, which is high for Ridgefield, but actually kind of low for Fairfield County AAAs. But it's fine for us, it's, you know, it's how we manage our, our fund balance and how, you know, the rating agencies and other, other parties are comfortable with how, how we do that. Uh, as we look at fiscal 20, everything looks good, you know, there's no, no issues other than, you know, we haven't gone through winter yet, so snow is always the, um, you know, the unknown at this point, and then you know, we have put more money towards tree work, and we'll have to see how that, that develops as well. Um, but at this point, you know, we certainly won't have the favorability that we had in 19, but I don't see anything in 20 that looks like it's going to be a, an issue. Um, other things to note, our debt service continues to come down, so our outstanding debt as of the end of 19 was around $64 million. Um, it's projected to be around $62 million at the end of 20. And our debt service goes down by 240,000 in, in fiscal 21. So we're seeing um, a small decline in debt service in 21, and then in 22, 23, and 24, <coughs> continues to go down by more significant numbers. And that's even building in some things like uh, combined fire and police and um, the town share of the uh, of the sewer. So um, you know, debt service. That's a that's a good. Uh, a good story. It's really just the, the bundle falling off finally, um, and we're starting to see the benefit of that. Um, let's see, other than that, uh, I think that's it. Again, you didn't mention BI. Oh, oh, you're right. So for BI in, in fiscal 21, as we look at our grand list growth, there'll be a small portion of BI that comes back onto the tax rolls. Um, I can't remember, do you remember how, how much that was in 21? About 50,000. 50. And then a much larger piece comes back in 22. And that's more in the million dollar range. Right. So it's from an abatement that's. Yeah, yeah, the, that abatement is falling off. So, you know, if you start looking a little bit forward towards 22, when you have the abatement and you've got the um, debt service coming down, it's pretty. Um, how many years of the BI abatements are we going? Are we looking for them to roll? Oh, this is it. This is the last last tranche, I guess. Right. 
Oh, so it's done. Then once we get the million in 22, Two. we have no, then the taxes are just going to be with the taxes. The well, they'll be up at that level. Yeah, they, right. they stay at that Okay, right. Okay. I thought we had a couple more years of that. We wish. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been seven years since they did their major meeting. Yeah, we did the, uh, we did the BI in 07 the town meeting to give them an abatement, which is what we're allowed to do under state statute, the seven-year tax abatement for the new buildings. And they continue, what happens is without, basically when the CO is issued, is when they come back on, or seven years, that's what the date starts, and then seven years subsequent to that CO date is when the buildings come on full, full amount. And that's what we're having now. You said 21 is, how much are we getting in 21? 50,000, about a million and 22. Anything else for Kevin? Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Next agenda item is comments from the public. <laughs> public is passing. <laughs> Ed. Ed. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll just go straight to our straight sort of uh, preview of the Board of Education, a preview of the town. Start some of it from each of them. And, uh, and get me a little bit, but I think I get most of my stuff back there. Too. All right, well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here uh, a second year in a row. Um, and I want to thank uh, all three boards for the good work that they did on the Board of Education budget. Uh, we are managing it very well, as uh, Dawn Norton explained to you before. And uh, to tell you a little bit about the process, we began. We just began internally the process. We're at the very beginning stages, and right now for us to continue exactly what we're doing today with the same level of staffing and the same um, services that we're providing to students, we're at about 5.75%. Now again, I'm saying that we're at the very early stages, and we don't automatically roll up or roll over um, exactly what we're doing. Each building uh, principal and each department comes before the leadership team, the central office leadership team. We go through each of those budgets. Uh, we look at other uh, expenses that we have, for example, uh, the drivers to our budget, which obviously are the salary and benefits. Medical insurance, which we're understanding from our medical insurance consultant, will be around 8.5%. Uh, last year, if you recall, or in the current budget, or last time this year, we were talking about 7%, and uh, we were able to hold at that. Other things that are contributing to our budget are OPEV and pension, special education, including transportation, which is, is going up considerably this year. Um, we haven't locked in, as Dawn said, uh, or she didn't say, she said we locked in for this year. We're not locked in for oil, gas, and electricity, liability insurance, or workers' comp. So we're using placeholders in those areas. So right now, we're at 5.75%, and we'll do a lot of good hard work before the budget is presented to the Board of Education on uh, January 13th. Is your schedule on your website, your budget schedule? Uh, it was presented at the October Board of um, our, our subcommittee meeting, our finance meeting, but I believe it'll be on the agenda for the 25th for the full board to consider whether or not they can meet all those dates. I only ask because the charter now asks me to put on a half schedule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey have to be part of that. So. so we hope to follow the one that was uh, in the, I think it was October 16th, it was the uh, okay. finance okay. meeting of the board of ed. Is your, is your bus contract up? No, we're. I think we're yeah, in the second year. year. Second year. Third. I thought last year was. Excuse me, Dawn. Do you know which year we we're in the bus contract uh, transportation? Third year. Third year. Okay. And basically, I think it's two point five percent for next year, but not for including outside. Right. So it's a third year of a three-year term or a five-year? Five-year five contract. Year contract. Okay. I think I think you heard transportation, but you were referring to special I'm talking about special education okay. transportation. Out of 
Is that a typical term, five years with, with a uh, bus contract, or is that something that um, you were able, you negotiated because you got a better rate, or that was just something that, I, could, does anyone have any background on that? I could just say from my experience, we had five-year contracts. That's generally, that's generally. It could be three to five years, whatever, yeah. whichever the board prefers. Mm -hmm. And your special <coughs> transportation or the number of, It would be the number of placements and the locations. Yeah. It's a combination. We always try to back our piggyback on other districts that are traveling to the same uh, location. As long as we can pick, you know, yeah. pick, they can pick us up on the route, or we can pick their children, their students up. So we try to be as efficient as possible. But sometimes you have outliers, and those are the ones that are a little more costly. Was that number up this year? It, I didn't hear. Is the number for special ed transportation up this year? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, there's uh, certain students, certain special ed students that are in district that um, require specific transportation that has increased the budget. Anything else? Um, we had talked at the Board of Finance meetings. It's nice to have Dawn come every month to present to us, but we were interested in possibly having somebody else from the Board of Education come either to every every meeting or every other meeting because there are instances where we've got questions and she's not really equipped to answer them. Would you be open to having someone come with her? We would. I would ask though that actually if those questions could come in advance um, just so that we're prepared to be able to come and bring you the information. Okay. And should we direct those to you then, Margaret? Mm -hmm. Sure, Kevin gave a uh, good detail on the operating side of things relative to 19 and fiscal 20. Um, I'll highlight some of the uh, capital projects that are going on. Branchville uh, Center, as you know, the Depot Road Bridge is closed. Um, we've detoured traffic to the Portland Avenue Bridge. That represents somewhat of a safety concern for a lot of people, especially exiting Portland Avenue onto Route 7. Uh, we submitted a plan. We have Frederick Clark, Frederick P. Clark, traffic consultants that we've retained to submit a plan to put a turn lane in on Route 7. It is not expected to be approved. The bottom line is that we're going to have to fix Depot Road Bridge because even if Portland Avenue were to close, we need another access point uh, to West Branchville Road behind the train station. So. Um, rough estimates, real rough estimates at this point were 1.4. Uh, we will be applying for a state grant that gives 80% of that, which would show a 20% town uh, participation rate, which is roughly, what, 280000 uh, So uh, I don't know where that's at at this point. We're still a ways away from it. That was a back-of-the-envelope rough estimate from Ty and Bond engineers that are working on this site. Um, Main Street project. Uh, you'll see test holes being dug. You may have seen someone over the last couple of weeks. What they're doing is excavating all the underground utilities to establish the proper elevations. They're collecting all of that data, and that will be fed into the plans that will be designed next year for 2020. There will be public hearings uh, as well during the year on those plans for public comment and participation with an anticipated construction schedule of the construction season in 2021. The ash tree problem that Kevin mentioned is a pretty severe problem that we're seeing across the state. Um, we have been working steadily since mid-July, August to attack the problem. We've spent approximately just under 200,000, maybe 180,000 on it. We did add our reimbursement, <coughs> excuse me, from FEMA that came in from the May of 2018 storm that we had. Uh, that was $95,000. We put that into, with board's approval, into the tree care budget to pump it up to give us a little bit of extra money. Uh, I had a meeting today. John Pinchback, by the way, retired October 31st. Mm -hmm. And I looked up tonight at the request of Mac Reed exactly how long he's been with the town. And I found a letter in the file from Lou Fossey in 1978, I believe, he was appointed tree warden. 
So uh, 41 years of service is certainly uh, something to be admired and thankful for. But John is retired, Steve Lavatory is assistant, uh, informal assistant, but he agreed to step forward. And as I said, we, for as many we take down, there are 10 times that number out there. <clears throat> and it's not as bad now because the trees are off the leaves, but I know on the golf course alone, when I looked at it, I thought of the golf course, I think um, they identified 44 trees. Four, Some, or more, 44 that are dangerous. Right in play. Right. You know, right. You know under where you walk. Right. So that gives you the kind of idea of the number of trees. When the leaves are on the trees, you'll see the ash, they're the ones without any leaves. And it doesn't mean that uh, that's all of them because it takes two or three years for the disease to really take hold. So there are many more infected that we anticipate. But hopefully, we're just going to do emergencies right now through the winter months and then pick up again in the spring uh, attacking those trees. On road paving, we've had issues with our pavement. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. Um, Bridgefield is not alone. All of the surrounding towns, we've had this discussion at our COG, our Council of Government meetings, about the quality of the asphalt. Two years ago, we switched the product to something called SuperPave out of Tilcon. I asked Pete Hill, was it more expensive? And he said no. So what that means, I don't know. Probably means they're using less recycled material uh, because a lot of the theory has been the amount of recycled material they're putting in is not bonding properly and, and it ending up with the erosion. Because you can see in some areas where you actually see the milling marks below and it's just not bonding in those areas. So hopefully uh, the last two years looks pretty good and uh, we may ask for more money this coming year than the uh, road and infrastructure budget. That's to be determined yet. We haven't discussed it. Uh, state grants, everything's on hold right now. That's Town A Road, uh, LOSIP, which is Local Capital Improvement Program, as well as municipal projects. Um, the municipal projects, Kevin's around 574, somewhere in there. That usually goes directly into the general fund. The Town A Road, we use to supplement paving um, at the end of the year. As long as we get through the winter, we'll see what the winter is like. Uh, and then we'll use it for paving in the spring. And then the low set money is usually used for sidewalks. And I said usually because we have two projects that are out there waiting for bids to come back. Well, actually one has not gone out to bid. And that's the expansion, expansion of the Governor Street parking lot. That's in planning and zoning. It was delayed there. It's being given to the New Inland Wetlands Board. So it'll be a little bit more time waiting to get a decision on that. Uh, as well as the Venus building, which bids are due on this Friday. Um, and we'll see what happens there. The reason why I refer to LOSIP and TAR, TAR money, if necessary, and is avail available, could be used for the parking lot, because it's for paving. And then LOSIP money can be used for capital projects. And we will see where the Venus building comes in. Hopefully it comes in within budget or even lower. So those are the uh, main issues uh, that we have today. Uh, going forward, we have not started our budget deliberations yet. Kevin requests capital be in, in December and operating by the first week of January. Um, so when we get those numbers in, we'll have a better feel. The one thing Kevin just uh, stated earlier, and I just wanted to explain, we had, uh, what was it, 800000 under on our insurance? Or five? 400. Four, but that was due to the consolidation of positions. Yep. And, and as a result, we did not incur those expenses. So that's a, a one-time reduction, and it wasn't for any other factor other than that we reduced positions. Uh, but that's the report. If anyone has any questions, I'll be more than willing to answer them. Did I hear that right that all this revenue is on hold? Yes, the governor has put it on hold. Um, what we were told today, a cost cost is the Council of Small Towns, that while they debate this transportation 2030, 
whether it's the Republican plan, the Democratic plan, or the governor's plan, or a combination of all three. Um, they're holding back funding, the governor is. Um, it's an election this coming year for the senators and representatives, so I don't know if he's thinking that will play into that politically. I don't know. And maybe put a little more pressure on them to agree with him. But, um, he seems to be having trouble getting agreement these days. What's the total that they're holding back from us? Uh, Town Aid Road is three, call it 380. Low six is about 154. And municipal projects 574. So almost 700,000? Yeah. Just under a million. Yeah. But that's money that we do not put in the budget. We you know, we don't forecast. But right. The municipal is Well, the municipal is in the budget. But the Town Aid Road is not. It's the first I've heard the municipal was. Yeah, all, all of them are. We didn't get anything on the municipal, right? No, but we only get that in one one, 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 one shot. Yeah. So when? Uh, normally later anyway. Yeah, I mean, we got Later. More. So we wouldn't know at this point whether we were behind on, on that. So I yeah, I didn't know that that was in play as well as far as being on hold. I assumed it was. Okay. They said everything's on hold. Yeah. I can follow up tomorrow. So okay. they said <coughs> That would also impact the state grant for the Brantville Bridge as well, right? That on hold process? Uh, no. That, that money is, that's another fund under okay. the DOT. Okay. It doesn't come under any one of those three that I mentioned. The municipal is just a revenue input. Right. It was originally, I believe, part of the sales tax. When they increased the sales tax, they decided to give each municipality a little piece of that. It used to be called like two or three different names over the years. It keeps, now it's municipal it keeps changing projects. It, it used to be called manufacturer exemption because it was it did offset the uh, it, yeah it tended to offset right. the abatements. Right. But there's also and they did away with that. There's another 118,000 on the state stabilization grant that we got last year. So. I haven't heard anything about okay. that. Did we but that was the piece. That? Yeah, that was the piece of the sales tax that kept going down. Um, we we're supposed to get like 500, and then they moved. They moved that 500 into the ECS and took it out of the municipal right. stabilization, so they just moved it around mm -hmm. to, to look like they were supporting education. <laughs> when they really, you know, when when from, from well, from, yeah, from the town's perspective, it was neutral. So, but it, it was nice we got the ECS back, but we lost this other piece, but most of this other piece. So, but I, I hadn't heard those way from the whole of Rudy, aside from the money that's on hold, is there anything that we see on the horizon coming out of Hartford on money that they may be taking from the town? No, the discussion today had to do with teachers' retirement and what's going to happen with that. So we formed a subcommittee to begin working on that, get more, any more information from the state, OPM, see what they are looking at. Uh, there's been no word on that at all. We use COG? Yes. No, cost. Cost, 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 cost small cost towns, which I mentioned earlier. Now that discussion is more specifically on the legislature. Um, no, I know, but is that on the teacher's retirement right. pension that last go around, they tried to push what? Uh, well, originally Malloy had 40% and then right. it was some other plan and everything uh, fell through, nothing happened. So we're anticipating that at least that discussion is going to come up again this coming session and we need to be prepared to oppose it. And we talked about the ash tree and bridges and mm -hmm. roads. Um, anything that we are we looking at any major capital projects on any of the town buildings that we may have to take a look at this year? No, no. Roofs, roofs, or um, anything else on the town buildings? I have to look at what we have in our five year capital. I don't have that in front of me that we may be blocking that on. Kevin, does anything come to mind? I mean, which we're going to have, you know, simple trucks and loaders. Yeah. And, 
I know, I know it's not in the moves. budget, but given you know the discussions we've had on some this past year on some of the school buildings, some of the other town buildings, are we going to? Is there going to be an expectation to see additional funds? <coughs> nothing at town hall. Nothing in this building. Um, we we have a million three that we're doing over here. Yeah, uh, that includes moving the board of education right. as well. Um, but I don't anticipate the golf course, Ed, there's nothing happening there. Highway department, garage two. Okay. I guess at some point there's the potential for the fields and Tiger Hollow, right? You know, that's in determining well, how that's going to play. Tiger out. Hollow, we did have a presentation, but uh, Kevin's having a meeting on Friday with Jim Bornstein, who's new head of the Tiger Hollow board, uh, to, uh, to review those numbers again. We had a presentation, I believe you did yep. at the board of uh, you're on the board of selectmen now, but <laughs> you did at the board of finance had a presentation on it. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt that no, we're going to. No, oh, you're the board of finance. Huh. Um, yeah, they're looking at Tiger Hollow <laughs> One, Tiger Hollow Two, and the track. They broke it down into those three categories. And uh, Scotts of the field, I thought it's Scotts Ridge too. Scotts Ridge well, I mean, is separate Scott's from Tiger Hollow. Tiger Hollow. Separate from Tiger Hollow, yeah. but still that, that that's space in our budget for it's going to be pushed off a year, according to Parks and Rec, for what we were told. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have been funding that. I think we're anticipating 385 out of a 522 cost, but if they push it off, that 385 will go up by about what 50? 50? 55. 55. So we'll be getting closer and closer to being able to fund that project. But the projects that were uh, reviewed under Tiger Hollow. Uh, the track is probably the most critical component there that needs to be addressed. So we need to take a look at that, whether it's Board of Education, Tiger Hollow, or the Board of Selectmen. The fact is it needs to be fixed. Um, the other two components are Tiger Hollow 1 and 2, which were, I believe, presented at roughly 800,000. Now that includes a new pad underneath and a lot more. A different infill uh, in, fiber, uh, in terms of the crumb rubber, it's going to a different kind of uh, silicone coated sand, which is more expensive. Uh, it depends on whether we do that or we replace it like we just, in, when did we do that? In 2011, 2012, we did Tiger Hollow One again. So the timing and the life of the field is 10 to 12 years. So we don't see Tiger Hollow being necessary until 21, 22. Uh, as well as Tiger Hollow 2. I don't remember when that was. 22, I thought. 13. 22. It was in, installed 13, in 13, 13, so 13. I think in 22, 23. Um, I don't see it as an immediate other than the track. Uh, and Kevin you can verify, he's run up there and he said there's a section that is dipping a little bit. You can't have that in the track. Home field advantage, maybe. I, don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want it. Uh, so, anyway, to answer your question, that's yeah, we're going to have to look at it's Tiger okay. Hollow. Just, but just back to Bob's question, like what's yep. on the horizon? Yes. Anyone else? Okay. okay. Well, that, that covers a lot of the uh, the ground I wanted to cover, but I just wanted. To, you know, kind of set where we were. Um, as Kevin said, we had a very nice surplus in uh, fiscal 19. Uh, we knew we were going to have that in May when we did our March, when we did the budget in March and April. Uh, and we did put uh, 1.675 million into revenue for fiscal 20. Uh, we've been doing that pretty regularly. Whenever we have a surplus, we kind of roll it into a tax relief the following year. Uh, the problem is you can't do that forever because you might not have surpluses. Well, as long as you've got them, you want to give them back to the taxpayer as soon as, as, soon as you can because that, they're, they're really tax payments that weren't used. Uh, so we put the 1.675 into the fiscal 20 revenue to offset. Uh, I guess the good news is when we look at fiscal 21, we're, we're going to be able to replace that 1.675 or somewhere near it. Uh, so that you know, so it's not whole. Because if you can't, if you don't have it there to replace it, then you've got to find other revenues to, to, to make it good on it. And so 
good news is we're going to be able, or looks very much like we're going to be able to carry the 1675 or maybe a little more over into the 21 budget. So that keeps that revenue piece the same. Uh, when you look at all the other revenue pieces, uh, well, we talked about VI, that doesn't come until 2022, but the organic growth looks like it's going to be, I think the last estimate was anywhere between a half a percent and one percent uh, organic growth in the brand list. Uh, last year it was 0.6. Uh, it's been around that, well, I think it was 0.8 the year before. Uh, most it's been in the last several years is one. Uh, that, that, oddly enough, as the figures work out, the, that generates about, half a percent generates about a half a million dollars, and, and one percent generates about a million dollars. So that, <coughs> that's the growth of the town. Um, the debt service rejection, uh, Kevin mentioned, is, is 250000 uh, So that's a, that's a spending decrease, which you know, allows to cover other spending increases. Uh, everything else is pretty flat. Uh, the Parks and Rec was flat this year. Golf was down, but it was probably due to uh, uh, weather. Uh, the ECS has been flat, uh, and ECR has been pretty flat, although that comes to your budget and not ours. Um, the one a little bit disconcerting number that is down is conveyance. Uh, conveyance was it's been around 800,000. We missed it by about 100,000, I think, somewhere a little more. We had a good month this past month. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. This current month? Because we're down. We were down 200 last year. Fiscal yeah, but we were down, we were down, at the end of October, we were down considerably. In the oh, okay, that's what I'm saying. In October, so so we had a very good month. Really? That's what we got out of the revenue mm -hmm. So you're today, you're today. It was a little higher than, I mean, it wasn't 40 million, it was like 28, so 30. Yeah. But year to date, year over year, through mm -hmm. October, mm -hmm. you know, July through October, we're down 17%. Maybe, maybe we catch that out, maybe it's a little seasonal, but uh, I didn't know anything October per se. That's actual to actual, what's, is that, yes. it has That's, that reflected in the budget? Like, well, the budget is, this, the budget is actually the same 800,000 that we missed. You know. Okay. Fiscal. So you just carried that yeah. same number? We carried it over. We, you know, we weren't sure. We, we missed it by more than we expected. A lot of times, a lot of this comes in in June. Right. I mean, in the last, the second right. quarter, um, uh, as you know, obviously. Um, and so we missed it by a little bit more than we were expecting at budget time. And we lowered, I think we lowered it from 25 to 800. Oh. Uh, but it looks like we're going to miss that, uh, or maybe not. I mean, if it picks back up, if October was good, it picks back up. That was the only, I mean, that was the only big revenue. And none of these are big pieces, of course. The big piece is taxes. Well, <laughs> the taxes are 136 million. And these are about, you know, 800,000. Uh, so that was a little concerning, but uh, if, it's, if it picks back up, that would be good. But, but basically, where I'm at, where I'm coming from all that is that in terms of next year's revenue, it looks like we'll be up somewhere around a million dollars in terms of both the debt service going down and the organic service, the organic growth going up uh, and everything else being flat. Uh, that's, that covers the first million dollars added spending uh, for next year. And anything else after that has to be covered by taxes. Uh, and we're, we're very, you know, it, it, the numbers are actually quite easy now because you're right at 100 million budget cost to it. So every 1% is a million bucks. <laughs> uh, and your number is about, every 1% is about 360,000, something like that. Uh, so, um, you know, we can cover the first 1% with, with revenues. Um, after that, it gets covered by taxes. So I'm not, I'm not gonna have to do the math for you there, because it's pretty obvious. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have been trying to keep taxes close to the inflation rate, which is, which we have done actually for the last five or six years, we've been very close uh, to, to keeping the average around 2%. Uh, the inflation is right at 2% or maybe a little under. Um, so that's, uh, <coughs> that's kind of where we are. Um, 
Dave, you trailed mm -hmm. off. I didn't hear what you said. You said what are you anticipating the grand list to be this year? I know last year it's it went from point. point eight to point six. What do you see? What do you see? Well, well I, I, we don't get it till December, but right now I was saying point five to one. Half a percent. Somewhere between half a percent. Increase. Point seven five. Yeah. So point seven. Yeah, it's a range. Last year it was point six. Right. So, you know, we have. I mean, there is stuff going on around town. The good news is there is, there is building and growth going right. on, uh, but it, but again, it doesn't generate that much. You know, in, I mean, it's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, but it would be nice if it were more. But uh, it generates somewhere that most of the million dollars would be generated by organic growth and, and the tap the taxes on it. Right. Uh, I mean, again, the good news is in 22 we. Those num these numbers would be a lot better. We're still going to have a 1.6 so six million in, uh, in carryover and the fund balance that we, you know, we may or may not be able to carry over a surplus. So it probably won't be 1.7 in fiscal 22. But uh, you know, we should some some of that's going to go to replace the surplus that we've been using to buy down the taxes. But, but we do see a good a good job in the. In the uh, the debt servicing and a, a, a good increase when the BI comes back on. So that, that will hold 22. Uh, you know, 22 is pretty far away, and so is fiscal 21 for to that extent in terms of, uh, you know, the big the big impacts are, are the state, we were just talking about a little bit, and the economy. Uh, you know, if, if we hit a recession, when and where, or I guess when at some point, but, and, and how deep. It doesn't impact the, the property tax that much because property is property and people have to pay the taxes. And if they don't, the next owner has to pay the taxes and we get it back eventually. Uh, but all these other things, you know, the last recession in 2008, all these other things went down. You know, the golf went down, the rec center went down, uh, the conveyance obviously went down. Uh, so all of these other uh, ancillary things went down and pretty severely. Again, they're not huge numbers, but they're, they are at some risk. Uh, so that's kind of the, the picture going forward with that. Uh, another kind of good news is I, I expected more pushback because of salt in terms of taxes, uh, just in terms of people not liking taxes. Uh, nobody likes taxes, but, but when, you, when you have a, a, a benefit, as salt was, and, and it goes away, that makes you pretty angry. So, uh, Just on, on that point, mm -hmm. Salt, uh, Al stated again in our revenue meeting last week that he's averaging, our assessor is averaging three to five calls a week from people living over in Westchester County asking if they were to move to Fairfield, to Ridgefield, and they had X amount of square feet, what's the approximate cost taxes on the house? I think what they're doing is looking to negate the impact of salt by relocating just a couple of miles away into Connecticut. I don't know how many have actually followed through and purchased here. No idea. I doubt if that's in your uh, enrollment projections. <laughs> <laughs> one, you know, one thing, David, if I may, I was just, you know, Bob asked. Building, we are looking, as Kevin mentioned, the police and fire stations, whether we're in the process of doing a needs assessment space analysis for that, and both buildings are well over 100 years old. Um, what we are looking at is a 22-23 build. However, we may want to put in some architectural money for the 2021 fiscal year. How much that is, I don't have an idea at this point. Right. That would still that would be a capital project. It would be a capital project, correct. But I didn't bring that up, and thank you for prying at me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, we're carrying, in, in the plan that, uh, that Kevin does, we're carrying about three million a year in the next two or three years, and then four million in the two following that. So, and that's, you know, you, well, we had a couple of big things that come on, mm -hmm. you know, the Governor Street plot came right. kind of quickly at us. Right, and, right. Uh, so, well, we, you know, we hope to take it in that in terms of the capital. 
So Rudy, to your uh, comment, uh, please correct me if I'm out of order. Um, so we did see something in the enrollment report around migration and, and where people are buying houses, uh, are they waiting to have kids, that type of stuff. You'll find that in the enrollment report. And so the headline is certainly that uh, people are waiting to have the kids before moving to Richfield, right. which is a, and in a substantial difference from years past. So to your question about are people moving, et cetera, that's in the enrollment report or the real numbers yeah, there. Yeah. The immigration. Yes, right. mm -hmm. correct. Thank you. So did I ask a question? So yeah, I guess we're I mean I guess we're through. So we're into general discussion. So I'll general discussion. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> um, so the last couple of cycles, the Board of Finance has been pretty conservative on the fund balance, just in terms of the guidance that, that we've set for a while back. Um, and we've been kind of on the higher end. As Kevin noted, it's it's lower than other towns, but, but we still get good ratings with that, and it's fine. Given the last year or two of more positive results, is your feeling that maybe even some of the uncertainty in the state, you still want to keep it conservative, or do you think in general it'll come back town, down to where it was in the past? Well, I mean, the last the last time we did this was several years ago, uh, where we put in, where we, and we never even did it with a motion, but we had a discussion and we generally had the guideline of having 8 to 9 percent of our budget uh, in, in reserve for the general fund. And uh, we have been a little bit over the 9. One year we went down to the 9, because uh, your, your predecessor on the board <laughs> said, if it's 9 percent, let's go to the 9, 9 percent, and, and we did. Um, but so now we're, you know, we just heard 10, but that comes down when we use some of it. Um, it's, it's lower than other towns because of both good news and bad news. You know, bad news is we don't have a lot of corporate uh, taxes. Uh, so it's mainly property taxes of housing rather than property, business property or other things like that. Uh, and, and some of the towns that have more fund balance have potential liabilities of, of companies moving out uh, and losing, they don't lose the building again, but they lose the, all the tax they get on the stuff that people have in the buildings. Uh, we don't have that. I mean, as you know, I mentioned BI, we have BI pretty, pretty uh, stable in, in Ridgefield. Built, BI actually built in Ridgefield rather than Denbury because our mill rate is lower. Uh, you may get, you know, you may pay, not get, you may get more house up there for the same money, but you get it's fifteen percent lower. You get a considerable We had to regate BI. Danbury had to give them a hundred percent abatement that I was referring to earlier. Uh, we were able to show them that we're fifty percent lower, and they agreed to an eighty-five percent abatement. So, I mean, to, to answer your question, we'll have to we'll have to look at it. I don't see any. You know, we have not approached the eight, which is lower. Yeah. Uh, and I doubt if we will. <laughs> Even though it is eight to nine, but uh, you know we will have to have discussions of that, and we'll have to, particularly when it gets to budget time, you know we'll have to have to see more where we are in that because the big, I mean it won't cover, like the teacher pension thing was going to be four million bucks. Well, you can't cover that from fund balance in the first year because it's only, it's about fifteen million now. Um, so you know so you'd have to cover it from from taxes somehow. So you can only cover so, so much from the from the, so why not give it back <laughs> and you know worry about it when the recession actually occurs and you have to, to you know, so so it's, again it's been our policy to give it back at least four to nine percent uh, given the best of our projections um, you know again we'll discuss it but unless there's some really big risk well I mean if there are risks of the magnitude that the state said maybe we should have maybe we should be sitting with you know, part of the reason we have that is because our representatives told us not to put in ECS one year, so we didn't put it in. That's the five hundred thousand. That's part of the five hundred thousand. We didn't put it in the revenues because we were told not to put it in the revenue, uh, and then we got it. So it's a surplus, and now it's going back to the taxpayers. Uh, so you know, we'll revisit it. I guess we have a lot of new board members, uh, but I, you know, it's. Yeah, it's always been our philosophy to get it to get it back, and not just keep it for the fact of having a nice rainy day fund. Because you know, on a really rainy day, it doesn't cover it. 
and we can't afford it. If it's a really bad thing, then we'll say that we can't afford it, uh, at least for that fund. Uh, and if, if it's a little thing, we try to cover it you know, as we go, which we always have because we've been really good at it. Is there a risk of ECS being held as well this year? Not this year. Okay. It's a two-year budget. It's in both okay. years. But so, in 2021? So, yeah, so it's in 21. The following year, it, it, it could be. It could be, I mean, it could be, be back on, everything's back on the table for you. Okay. The, the, the following two year state budget, okay. 22, 23. But it's, it seems pretty secure for this year. That's why I was surprised at what he said about the other things, because I thought they were pretty secure for this year as well. Yeah. Well, that's, Not if he doesn't that's release them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I just want to say thank you, actually, to the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen members. It was at this meeting last year where the whole subject about the school facilities was raised. And I, I th I'd like to thank the boards for being collaborative in terms of going out and doing the walkthrough. Um, the walkthroughs looking at the conditions specifically. I think it was Maureen, Steve, um, Sean, Amy, Jessica, Doug, and Fran. Right. So thank you guys for going out and doing that and then going back and advocating on the school's behalf to each of your boards and then teach the boards um, for including in your, your budgets, um, you know, operationally <coughs> and capital um, for allowing us to kind of move forward with a lot of those needed repair items. I know we still have a lot of more work to, to do, so I know on the, on the town side, I think there were still some projects that you guys needed to, to take care of. Always will be. And always will be. Um, and I know on the Board of Ed side, we do as well, and you'll see that in our operating budget. Um, and then I think our capital budget is at our meeting, I mean, our capital request, I'm sorry, is being presented Monday. next Monday. Um, and that will include some items in there, you know, kind of coming out of those walkthroughs. But again, thank you. That was a great collaborative effort from all the boards, and I felt like we needed to loop around because that came up a year ago. And if you're amenable, we, you know, we should probably plan on doing a subsequent walkthrough between the time when the capital plan is presented, we have it in our hands, and the first and the time when you're considering budgets. Try to find a time in there where you can, again, see some of the progress and see what would be next. I think that would be probably pretty healthy to do. And it's always the issue of when, is, when are students not in the buildings, right? And finding that time. So we'll, we'll see what we can figure out and do that to a subsequent visit. Anything else? Okay, I guess we're adjourned. We uh, we will have a board of finance meeting right here soon. <laughs> you're welcome to stay, <laughs> but uh, if you're not staying, because you're clean, so you don't.